click onto the Global Tropical over you for May the 4th, 2023. As is always the case in these videos of Pacific Fisher and mine alone, and if you're here looking for lo local vision to you ahead of a tropical cyclone, you're in the wrong places. I also go big picture of things, and I cannot get down to a local level in the local weather office or local emergency management can. Well, it's been a bit quiet in the tropics as of recent, but we are getting into more of what's looking to be an active period. And we have several systems active right now. We have Invest 93W here over the Philippines, and we're going to talk about this before we get into this whole mess in the Indian Ocean. We also have Invest 94W active here just near Palau. Not really expecting any development out of this system, though really mainly a rain threat to Palau. We're really not going to be talking about that at all. And the system is not fully active right now, but we are going to do, at a later point in the video, after 93W, talk about the potential for a North Indian Ocean system, particularly the Bay of Bengal. So if you're looking for that part of the video specifically, I will leave a chapter thing at the bottom. You uh, should be able to just click on the uh, bottom bar of the video and you should be able to skip to that. But first, we're going to talk about Invest 93W since it is active right now. And sticking to the satellite view, there a few things that look to be potentially troubling 93w first off it's been interacting with land for the past several days that is pretty easily seen you can see that it has tracked really through the philippine islands and sure there are water spots in between the islands but overall the land interaction has likely inhibited this system quite a bit and now the system is at a point where it's about to cross out of the Philippines and it's about to be into the South China Sea. And overall, things are not looking too good in the South China Sea. Just looking there right now, you can see where just south of China and just east of Taiwan, we don't really have much clouds at all. No thunderstorms and very little cloud action there in the South China Sea. This is a bunch of dry air that will likely cause some issues with 193W in the short term and i'll show you that here here's the gfs sounding from the 18 utc run as this system comes into the south china sea you can see humidity relative humidity values start to drop and we have this large pocket of dry air in the troposphere and if you don't know how to read this uh, this is what's called a skew t plot the red line is a temperature plot of the well the temperature throughout the troposphere and the green line is the dew point uh, same as temperature all the way up through the troposphere. The further these lines are apart, the more dry the environment. And you can see in an average value from 850 millibars, which is about here, all the way up to 300 millibars, which is here, that average value is about 67%. And while certainly it looks moist at the surface, when a system like this would try to blow up thunderstorm activity, into the troposphere it would be sent into these levels of drier air and that could certainly cause some issues if one were uh, if a storm were trying to form now wind shear is not too high and uh, certainly with a value like that you could still get some formation but the gfs does depict the environment getting more dry in time as we go ahead on the model field just for reference by the way this is where 93w is on the model right now at analysis you can see as it goes into the south china sea it never really develops at all and by the time we're out to five days there's nothing really traceable really the only trace of 93w is this little yellow speck here little area of weak vorticity still in the south china sea left over from 93w now if we go to the european there will be a little bit of a difference again the system is over the philippines on this model analysis and as we go in time towards day four and day five, you'll notice the system's not moving as fast as it is on the GFS. And this is well illustrated in the sounding once again. And we're not looking at the skew T plot this time. We're looking at this plot to the right of the skew T plot. This is showing the wind direction and speed with height in the troposphere. If you look at the European, notice how in the low levels to the surface, we have very weak flow not much action at all taking place there really the only weak steering that exists in the column is aloft in the mid and upper levels contrast this or compare this to the gfs there's something different here you notice the weak steering flow is up aloft in the mid and upper levels while we have 
steering flow very weak, but still steering flow towards the surface. This allows the system to continue tracking towards generally the northwest on the model, as the system is very weak on the model and it would likely not be feeling uh, much flow out of the uh, upper levels of the troposphere, though even if it was, these winds would likely not inhibit that northwesterly flow in general. And if you look at the European again, that very weak flow with a weak system like this being mainly kept uh, of, of the steering flow at all uh, to the surface, it doesn't move too much. It doesn't move nearly as fast as it does in the GFS. And this does make an impact. You notice at the of day five on the European model, we don't just have a remnant trace of 93W, we actually have a broad low. And eventually, as we go towards day seven, this does start to try and develop into what could be a brief and weak tropical cyclone. And we've seen some models jump back and forth on this. The GFS at one point did show a, a system out of 93W, but now it's backed off. Now the European is on board. So there's a bit of uncertainty here. It all depends on how things exactly pan out. But for those in Vietnam, don't worry. It's not going to be a big typhoon. It's going to be one of those pre-season, or not pre-season, but early year, early season systems that would likely be more of a rain threat. Uh, more than anything. But that is all that I've got for 93W, but we're going to now move on to the North Indian Ocean as we have a lot going on, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen stuff online, all these model postings of the GFS showing a massive cyclone taking shape in the North Indian Ocean. Uh, of course, it, it's important to remember we are five to seven days out from the system actually even forming. Right now, we just have a massive cloud of thunderstorm activity along the equator. We don't even have a formed area of low pressure. And I'm going to show you in just a bit how much uncertainty there is of exactly where the system could track. And that has massive implications on who gets what and what happens with the storm. Now, as of right now, we have a lot of this convection here along the equator. And we have what's going on is called a westerly wind burst event. And as the name entails, it's an event where you get westerly winds, anomalously westerly winds, along the equator. And you can sort of see, if we look at the natural trade winds of Earth, you can kind of see how we can get tropical cyclones out of this. Note that the trade winds along the equator are generally eastwards in the tropic, tropical regions. They flip to westwards in the subtropics, but along the equator in the tropics regions, those winds, the trade winds, are easterly. And through this, you can sort of see how you can get an area of low pressure to form here, where you have this sort of rotating aspect of the winds from this westerly wind burst and the natural trade winds. And that can happen on both sides of the hemisphere. And we've seen models go over the past several days. They've been flipping in cases between a North Indian Ocean system and a Southwest Indian Ocean system. We've had, excuse me, we've had a lot of systems or a lot of models try and only show a North Indian Ocean system. We've even had models only showing a Southwest Indian Ocean system. So you can already tell there's a little bit of uncertainty here. There's, uh, now, now some models are better at depicting westerly wind burst events like this better, but again, we're, we're still not sure what hemisphere this a system may form on. It could be both, it could be one of them. And of course, after that, you have the big question, where does it form? And that is unfortunately a thing that we cannot nail down this far out. Here's the GFS model at by day five. You can see we have a formed tropical cyclone on the model in the southeastern Bay of Bengal. Now, if we go to the European, you can notice that we, the European's a bit weaker on it and it's much further west. Now, if we go to day seven on the model, here's the GFS showing a big tropical cyclone there in the central Bay of Bengal, and the European, much slower, it has a tropical cyclone there, but they're also still pretty far spread. This spread becomes even more noticeable if we look at the ensembles. And here's the GFS by five days. You can see this massive spread here. We, they've got members showing a storm in the Adamant Sea. We've got even some members tracking towards India here. 
and you can see that massive orange blob there showing the uncertainty there. Here's the European as well. This is by uh, day seven. You can see all the spread here and this does take shape on the GFS as well. If we go towards day seven, you can see here, here's day seven. This is so much uncertainty here and you can see that if we compare this to the, to the European, we can get a general outline of uncertainty from both of these ensembles of this rough area of where the storm could potentially be in seven days. This is a massive area, and if we get the distances that this whole area consists of, it's, well, it's hard to see, but it's over 2,000 kilometers wide. And of course, this has multiple implications as I talked about earlier. This the formation of the system, the location of it, is highly dependent on who gets what. If you have a system forming, say here, where say the bulk of the GFS ensembles are, you could get a storm tracking into Bangladesh. If you get a system here on the western fringe of the GFS and European ensemble means, you could potentially get the system tracking into India. And of course, there are also some concerns of what's the steering going to be like at this time. Here's the GFS 500 millibar flow. This is the GFS ensembles at seven days. Notice we have a ridge here over the Arabian Sea, and we have this weak trough here over uh, northern India. What these two features are doing is they're trying to both pull the system in separate ways. This trough is trying to pull it towards India and Bangladesh, and this ridge is trying to pull this system into India. And of course, this the movement of the system depends where it forms. If you have a system here on the eastern end of the Bay of Bengal, it's more likely to get caught by this trough and come up towards, say, eastern India or Bangladesh. Meanwhile, if you have a system more on the southwestern side of the Bay of Bengal, it may still try, this trough may still try to pick it up, but this ridge may be strong enough to pick up the system and potentially track it westwards. And if you get a solution in the middle, it could be just a, a, a factor of how strong is this trough and ridge. Is this ridge perhaps a bit more east? And does that allow it to catch it and pull it into India? On the other side, is this trough perhaps a bit stronger? Is it a, perhaps a bit further southwest? In that case, could it potentially pick up the system and bring it into India maybe closer to Bangladesh as well. You can start to see all the uncertainty here, and this is just something that is natural with this. This is five to seven days out. It's natural to have a lot of this uncertainty. Now, there is something that is certain. It looks like something will possibly try to form either on the northern or southern hemisphere side. Really, all global models are pointing towards a North Indian Ocean system. The only one not showing this is the CMC or the Canadian. You can see by day five and day seven, it's really not forming something. It later down the line does form something in the abdomen sea. But something to note is that models like the GFS are generally good at catching these westerly wind burst events with tropical cyclones. So while the GFS intensity may not be something to really pay attention to right now, certainly because when we're looking at a landfall here, we're looking well over uh, seven days. That may be 10 days plus out by this point. It still has some credibility to indicating the potential tropical cyclogenesis of a westerly windburst event. You can also say the European may also, it's, it's still catching on to a potential tropical cyclone, but it may not be catching the westerly windburst event as well as the GFS would. So while there is uncertainty, large uncertainty on the exact position, there is some certainty that we may get something. And if you're in areas along the coastline in the Admin Sea in the Bay of Bengal, the most important thing to do right now is just pay attention to the Indian Meteorological Department. They'll keep having uh, these tropical weather outlooks come out. They're already giving us, I believe, a low chance of development by day five. Those will certainly uh, go up as we get in time, assuming that these models keep up with this indication of a potential tropical cyclone. And another important thing is don't 
pay too close attention to, say, the GFS putting a massive cyclone into India and Bangladesh. You can see here on this run, it puts a big, big storm into Bangladesh. If this were to plan, plan out, it would certainly be a very devastating storm. But it's, you know, this is close to the Pacific hurricane season starting. This is Saturday, May 13th. This is very long range, and it's just important not to get too tangled up into the details right now. It's very difficult. It's not even very difficult. It's impossible to come and tell you exactly who gets what, how strong is the storm going to be. Again, the most important thing is just pay attention to it. It's certainly a threat, and uh, of course the Indian Meteorological Department will keep you all updated. Now that's all that I've got to talk about for today. It was a bit of a longer one, especially on the North Indian Ocean System, and I'll have future updates on that and uh, 93W as well, if uh, warranted for that invest bill. Uh, but thank you all for watching. Uh, stay safe in the Philippines as you're being impacted by that investment. Same at Palau with 94W, and I uh, hope you all are doing well.